Good morning. We want to welcome you to our Sunday service. If you will please rise as we enter in time of prayer and worship. God, we thank you for gathering us here today, Lord. We thank you for bringing us here, Lord, to receive all that you have for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Yes, God, we praise you on this place, Lord, for every victory that is taking place in our lives, God. We lift your name higher and higher, God, because we know, Lord, that forever you are lifted high. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you are doing, God. We praise you in this place, God. We thank you so much, Lord.
so grateful God for you are our God Lord this morning we stand before you God in praise God we stand in this house to say here we are God to worship you God here we are to worship you God regardless of whatever took place this week or Lord here we are to worship you God Lord regardless of the things that have taken place God Lord we worship you God Lord in this world in which things change God you are our constant you are our help God you have been faithful to us God so this morning, God, Lord, we stand, God, in all of you. Lord, we stand, Lord, in gratitude, Lord, just recognizing, Lord, that, Lord, you are so good to us, God. May you be exalted in all that we do, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. You may have a seat. It is good to see everyone here this morning. 
If you're a guest with us for the very first time, we want to welcome you here in this place. Or if you're logging online, it is good to have you. We're about to enter a time which we give to God. And if this is something new to you or something different and you don't quite understand it, you can abstain from this part. But um, otherwise, we invite you to join us as we give unto God. And this is our place of worship, our spiritual act of worship. To us, worship is not just singing songs to God in the morning, but it is everything that we do. And part of it is to entrust to God and to give back to God the things uh, as a way of us to say, Lord, you can test my heart, but also, God, to show my gratitude to the things that you have done uh, on my behalf, God, and for those around me as well. And so if you will, just uh, get your whatever you're about to give ready, and we're going to pray for it. And you can also go online. You can give to VBC, at vbchouston.com and click on the Give button. Or uh, what we do at our family, we use the Push Pay uh, app, and that's been something that we uh, are able to do consistently. And um, if you haven't done so already, use Push Pay is a really easy thing to do. You can do it at any time in the night or during the day, and it's a very convenient way for you to give as well. So let's go ahead and pray and ask God to uh, bless what we're about to receive. God, Lord, we thank you, God, for the opportunity, Lord, to give. Lord, we thank you, God, Lord, for the opportunity, God, Lord, to sow into your kingdom, God. We ask, Lord, that you will bless what we're about to receive. We ask that, Lord, you would multiply, Lord, and cause it to bear much fruit, God. In all things, we're grateful for those who give. We ask that you bless them. Lord, let them see the joy of it. Lord, let them experience, Lord, what it is, God, Lord, to, Lord, give, God, Lord, joyfully, God, with the rightful heart. We're so grateful, God. And, Lord, as we always pray, God, give us the wisdom and courage, God, to make decisions that move your kingdom forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the ushers come by to take up your tithes and offering, I have a few announcements to relay to you. And of course, being that it is a nice, cool morning, we do invite you after this service to stay back for our breakfast, which would include coffee and other drinks, as well as some kolaches and maybe some donuts. So however it is, the more important part is that you stay back. Let's just hang out, spend some time, connect, and just catch up with one another. It is a good time and a good opportunity for us to kind of just uh, not only be able to, um, you know, just put something in our stomach, but um, also kind of share in and what God is doing uh, in our life or through our life. Well, VBC Houston's Thanksgiving service takes place this coming Sunday, November the 24th. We will have our 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock worship, and especially for this Sunday, we will have our Thanksgiving meal during the lunchtime as well. And so we invite you to stay back. We invite you to invite your family, family and friends. This is a wonderful time for us to get together. This is a wonderful time to invite your neighbors to come and join us as well. And, this, uh, and it's such a wonderful time. And many people during the holidays, they uh, tend to want to come to church. And so if you are looking for an opportunity to invite people to church, uh, next week would be one of the best opportunities to do so. And if you uh, would like to also uh, bring uh, a part of the meal or, or to contribute uh, your part as well, you can also uh, sign up with uh, Michael Wynn. He will be in the breakfast area this morning. You can sign up with him and tell him what you're going to, what desire, sides or desserts that you will be bringing. Now, the holiday season will always remind us to have a heart of gratitude and appreciation for family and loved ones. And we will have a child dedication this Sunday as well. I think this is a great time for us. So during our Thanksgiving service, whether it's the 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock service, if you have a child that you have not dedicated and you would like to do that and you want to dedicate your child unto God, it is, this is not like an infant baptism. This, this is actually an opportunity for us as a church to recognize the blessing that you have as your child. Uh, but not only that, but this is also as a church, we agree uh, as our part to um, pray and to help the, uh, your child grow in the Lord as well. Because, you know, raising a child is not just an individual's responsibility, but as a church family, we also want to contribute to that as well. Many of you guys who have grown up in the church, you understand this. You've had the opportunity to be able to re be raised. Not only you've had aunts and uncles not only at home and in your own personal family, but you have aunts and uncles here at church too. Uh, I came to uh, know the Lord when I was 14, and I had aunts and uncles in the faith, and I still have them now. And I hope that you will, just as my children do, uh, I hope that you would also uh, enjoy that. So if you have children that you have not had a chance to dedicate before God, please sign up with Julianne at Julianne at VBCHouston.com. Julianne at VBCHouston.com. Now, attention everyone here. If you have served or you have any opportunity to volunteer for VBC Houston, 
save the date, December 28th, 6th to the 28th. So right after Christmas, the following day, we're going to meet up in Huntsville for our annual Dream Team Retreat. This is a wonderful time for us to just gather together, decompress, sharing what God is doing, and more importantly, to discuss and learn more about what God is doing in 2020. There's some great things that are going to take place, and so we hope that you will sign up for it and you will join us in Huntsville. This is a great time if uh, you and your family to come and join us. So if you're in the Dream Team, your family's not, of course, take the whole family. You can also invite friends to join us here, but we're going to tailor our message particularly for our Dream Team members, and uh, we will take registration today during lunch. It is a wonderful time. I hope that you will uh, set this uh, time aside. And like I said, there's some great things that are going to be unveiled in 2020. We're going to do it. Uh, part of it's going to be at the uh, Dream Team Retreat, so we hope that you would join us for it. Now, we've been studying in Romans chapter 8, best chapter ever. It is, personally to me, one of the best chapters ever for sure. Uh, if you do not know, Romans is, if there's one theologian that said that if you lose all of the Bible, but if you keep Romans, you would, you would have a majority of the teachings of the Bible in Romans. If you've ever spent some time in Romans, it has some really deep teachings. But chapter 8 especially is a beautiful uh, teaching as well as a mandate for believers and how we are to live our life with us, between us and God, but also between us and each other. So in part four, Pastor Khan's going to lay out some stuff for us. So if you will, let's welcome our senior pastor. Praise the Lord. Would you go with me to the scripture that we were study today in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. 8 to 39. This part of the scripture, of chapter 8, is powerful, uh, packed with uh, truth and foundation that we can build our life on. Um, and we will draw a lot of application from the scripture, verse 28 and on. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. Noted that word purpose. It was 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. And he whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. That's alone, verse 30, is tell us the whole salvation that we can see that he predestined for us to be saved. He are called and he justified us. That's the first thing happened immediately. And then he sanctified us. That's the progressive that we are changed into the image of the Son of God every day. And then the final stage of our salvation is glorification. That's when God gives us a new body. That's when we uh, enter into a perfected of our salvation. God everlasting love, verse 31 and on. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, it's also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sore? As it is written, for your sake, 
we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yes, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor principality, nor power, nor thing present, nor thing to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other cre created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a comfort piece of scripture for us. And today, we will bring the, the message, and the title is Secure in Christ. There is the security that we have in Christ, not only keep us safe, but also empower us so we can be more than conquer in our life. Are you facing battle lately? Challenge in your life? Something bigger than you? Then this scripture tells us that from the position that we can fight, we have been promised that we victorious in God. And this is a powerful thing for us in life. Because when we face challenge, we face famine in our life, when things go uh, uh, difficult, then many times we begin to question, can we make it? Then we begin to question, can we uh, gain victory in the end? The scriptures tell us today is yes. But let's see this wonderful discovery. And I think that this will be um, the statement that all of us can agree. Because we are surrounding with religion that is, is all doing, doing, doing. And a set of rules of do and don't. But here, Martin Luther says something that is very powerful. To be convinced in our heart that we, are for, we have forgiveness of sin and peace with God by grace alone. It is the hardest thing. Let me say it again. To be convinced in our heart that we have forgiveness of sin and peace with God by grace alone is the hardest thing. Because we feel like we need to add something to it. We need to work, work, work on it. But the Scripture tells us in this piece of uh, passage of, of Scripture in Romans chapter 8, it tells us it's all have been done by God in Christ. What a blessing. That's why we can be eternally secure in Christ. The first message we have learned that we are no more under any condemnation. That means God totally forgives our sin. There's no more condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. When you stand outside, you stand at a place of be condemned. But when you exchange with Christ, you step into His righteous place and allow Him by faith to take away your sin and carry your sin for you. You are justified. There's no condemnation for you. It doesn't matter what's going on. From that moment on, you in Christ, you are secure. Yes, when you stumble, you can go right back to God and ask for forgiveness and with a, 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 a true repentant heart. You can hear God say, no more condemned. Because Christ right now, not only died for us, He resurrected for us. And when He ascends back to heaven right now, He in the position of intercession for us. That means He is a lawyer. Every time he's an attorney, every time the court of heaven is open, when Satan brings something to accuse us, that we have Jesus Christ who rise up 
from his position, and he said, yes, they mess up, but it's in being paid for. It is finished. I already paid for. My blood has washed away their sin. There's no more condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. What a powerful thing for us to live. Because condemnation is something that is just like a ton of weight that is on your shoulder all the time. I have thousands of people come and share with me. After they got saved, something wonderful happened. The burden that they carried all their life, suddenly it dropped. They feel that they can walk lighter. They feel like their past, this have been dealt with. And that feeling is come from the fact that Christ has carried the burden of sin for them and crucified it on the cross with him. Now, he gives us the freedom and no more condemnation in our life. And we have learned that, that after we are saved and free from slave to Satan, now we have a wonderful master, the Spirit of God, begin to help us. And when we yield to him, he will take over. And from there on, we can walk in the Spirit. And when you don't want to go back to your old life anymore, you can depend on the Holy Spirit to help you walk in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And when you do that, this wonderful thing happened in us that we experience the freedom that we never tasted before. Even to the freedom that we have to say no to sin. In the past, before we come to Christ, when temptation comes, when sin lurks around, we reach out because the flesh the desire of the flesh in our life, reach out to grab that sin. But now we no longer live according to the flesh, but the guiding, the conviction, and the leading of the Holy Spirit. We experience the freedom that we can say no to sin. Instead of for writing the trap of the devil, we can say no and we can walk away and know that we don't miss anything, but gain everything because we in Christ Jesus and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. The first thing I invite you to look at today is we are held by His purpose. We're secure in Him. And there's a purpose that God has for us. And look at verse 28. This is the, the, the most famous verse talking about ad, uh, adversity that we have in our life. And when we look at this verse, it's bringing us so much comfort, knowing that there's a purpose that God has. And because of that purpose, because we are held by His purpose, we know that in the end, the end of the day, His purpose will fulfill. And He has the other power to make this verse 28 happen, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Praise God. The thing that we see in our life, sometimes tearful, sometimes even our mess up, and we're about to give up because we say, what a use to fight anymore. We can hear from this verse say, wait, 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 wait. We know. And I'm here today to remind you that we need to know. We have to have this knowledge that we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. Just like we subject ourselves to all night study, prepare, to take the exam, to take the test, because we know that all of that work together for our good. That's why we study, that's why we prepare 
for our tests, our exam. And in the same way, God, according to His purpose, He can turn our mess up into something beautiful. Because of His purpose, He can turn things that we think, oh, that's a big loss. He said, no, in Him, He has all the power to turn that loss into gain for us. What a powerful God that we serve. That's why we are secure in His purpose. We know that all things work together. All things work together. When I think about it, it's just like, it's, it's to remind me, um, a baker when I tried to bake a cake. I grew up um, in order to get ready to leave Vietnam. My mom and, 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 and us back then at that time think that when we come to this country, uh, leave Vietnam, we will not have uh, Vietnamese food. So every time she cooked something, every time she does something, he call me in, she say, stand there and watch. You will learn, and someday you will have opportunity to cook for yourself. And then when there's so, some special dish that um, uh, she wanted to teach me how to cook, she said, stand there and learn, and I will allow you to have time to practice, because there will be time that you will cook for your wife. And as a man, um, one-fourth of Chinese in me. That is very important. A Chinaman has to know how to cook and do well in the kitchen. And we cook. And I remember we come to the place that we want to bake a cake. And it it's, it's takes time to prepare. Uh, first we we get some egg out and then we crack it and put it into a bowl. And then we get the, the stir and we begin to beat it up until it's bubble up, until it's all mixed. The white yolk and the red yolk is, is coming in and we, we mix it up. And then we put some, some flour in there. And then we stir it up. And we put some sugar in there and we stir it up. And then make sure that we have a couple of drops of vanilla in there, and we stir it up. And all of that. And when you take time, you think this is, the egg is look perfect. Why we have to crack it open and then drop it in there? Not only drop it into a bowl, but beat it up so bad that it's all mixed up. Just like life. Some part of our life, we feel like it look perfect. Just like this. But then things come and it cracks us up. And we spill over into a bowl and life continues to have its way. We begin to stir us up and there's, there, there's mixing of, of things in our life. And then on the top of that, something that is tasteless, like flour, is put in. And stir it up again. There's some sweet thing in life, but it's also put in there and mix it up. And then vanilla, something that if you just taste it by itself, is bitter. But it's drop in there, a couple drops of bitter things in there. And then it put into a mold. Back then, we, we back on a bed of coal. And this mold is made out of brass. It's have the top and the, the bottom. The bottom we put a flower in, and we, we close it, and we put on, 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 on charcoal, and then we have some on the lead. Just like, go through the fire. We don't like it. But suddenly, thing that is, then give out anything that we think is good. All the bit up, all the mixing up. Now slowly we begin to smell the fragrance. A bread. A cake. It's in the process of cooking. And everything is rise up. And by the time 
with timing that is almost right. We take the lid off and put a, a, either a chopstick or a, some bamboo stick. We, we test it. And when we stick in there, it's no more leak flies. But everything is clear, and we know that it's cooked. And by the time that you unlead that all the way, the whole household is filled with that fresh cake that you just made. The same way. God would is all his power. Something he used, the, the, the bitter thing of life, a couple drop into it. And sometimes we allow the thing that we have messed up in our life, we allow our life to be all bit up. And he mixed everything together to make some time something good come out of it. He had a purpose. He had a purpose. Just like a good teacher has a purpose. When he or she give a test, the exam, the pop quiz for the student to do, it's not just to torture them but to make sure that they learn and retain the information, able to recall the information because that is needed in their life. What a powerful picture for us to see. And God doing all of that with a purpose, and that purpose is that we conformed it into the image of His Son. God ultimately have an image of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And He wants to work everything in our life, make sure that we become more and more like Christ. And one day, when we walk in our family, in our community, people from afar look at us, they say, Oh, Jesus walked in our town. But when they come closer to us, they say, Oh, just a Christian. But that word is also loaded with the meaning and idea that Christ, chin, Christian, is Christ, the follower of Christ, or little Christ. When we walk into our community, walk into a room. And those he predestined, he also called and those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. Like I said in the beginning, this verse, verse 30, is the essence of the gospel and salvation that we receive. That we can be justified. Sinner can be forgiven. And we are declared righteous in God's eyes. When we accept Christ to be our Lord and Savior, that means we call Jesus, Savior, save me. Christ, the anointed one, come and we bring power to change, to transform my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. I receive your salvation, and as soon as you do that, the Scripture tells us here that we are justified. We are forgiven. It's happened right away. We are justified. And then we see the, 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 the next stage is sanctification. It's a process that the Holy Spirit working in our life, the process that God working in our life, make us more like Christ every day. That's the sanctification process. And it's happened as soon as we get saved until we see Him face to face sanctification. And then the third one is glorification is when God not only justifies us and those He justifies, He also glorifies. He will give us a new body. This old house one day will lay down and God prepare a new house, a better house, the house that will never decay a new body that God prepared for us. And when we enter to that, that glorified body is the last thing 
that salvation brings into our life. And that is how we know that we are secure in God because of His purpose. Of His purpose. So we know that we are sons of God. We are children of God. The next thing is very important for us is we are held in His love. When I do parenting class, the first thing I teach parents to make sure that your child tank of emotion is filled with love. Your love for them. Why? Because when they face challenges in life, when they go to school and people talk down on them, all kind of things, when things that is, 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 is uh, challenge them, when they are back up, by your love. They have the power and the courage to stand up and say no. Because they know that even when people retaliate or fight back, push them back, they know that by the time they get home, there's two people at home is waiting to love on them. Doesn't matter what the world tell them or treat them, they know that they go home, they have love at home. Why, where we draw that principle is from God. He loves us. And He wants us to know that when we face things in life, remember, He loves us. Because there's time that we will question, is God love still around? Does He still love me? The answer is yes, yes, yes. He loves us. He loves us to the point that Paul begin to pose the question. The first question is, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That's the first thing that we can see here because of His love. We know that nothing can stand against us. They may rise up and against us, but they cannot stand against us because of God's love. And with Christ, you are not only promised to be in His purpose, but He makes sure that we know that we are more than conquer. We are overcome. Look at me in verse 30. It's yet in all these things we are more than conquer through Him who loves us. More than conquer. The word conquer in the Greek is nikao. Nikao means Subdue, conquer, overcome, prevail, get the victory. In Christ, we are conquer, but not enough. He do more than that. Not only conquer, but we are more than conquer. The word more than conquer that hope ni kaal is mean to make things vanish beyond recognition, gain a decisive victory, exceedingly more than a conqueror. You not only a conqueror, but in Christ, He make you more than a conqueror. What a powerful picture to help us here. Doesn't matter what life brings, the end of the day, when we know and recognize that we are more than conquer, we can face anything that life throws at us. When life throws you that curveball, don't worry. God has a plan. Okay, so you already make you more than conquer in your life. Say to yourself, I'm a 
a conqueror. Many times when I minister to people, especially deliverance, cast out demon. The demon in them begin to speak out loud and challenge who you think you are. When they asked this question, many Christians took off and run. Because they not only speak in the sound of voice, but it's brass and that is earring. It's just like the way that their eyes express. It's just like, who you think that you are? Praise God, I know who I am in Christ. I'm more than conquer. So I shout back, I'm a son of God. I'm here to destroy your work. Get out in the name of Jesus. And just like that, many times they say, we know, we know, just ask him. See, sometimes the devil will bluff at you. But if you don't know who you are in Christ, you will take up and run. But if you know who you are in Christ, held by his love, secure in him, then you can rise up and take care of business because you know who you are in Christ. Because if God is for us, who can be against us? Very important for each and every one of us to remember this truth. If God is for us, then who? Who can stand against us? If we have this all-powerful God to stand with us, bless us, then who can stand against us? Important. That we need to recognize this in our life. Our approach my 60. Live long enough to find many battles in life. I'm here to tell you that this knowledge that I'm more than conquer in Christ, He makes me more than conquer. There's time that the battle is so fierce that I have to stand back and lean back into this wonderful truth and then begin gain strength and fight back. When I bounce back, with this understanding, I'm more than conquer. I gain victory. And I'm here this morning to remind you that you are more than conquer. Don't let the devil say you are a nobody. Say, no, I'm somebody because I'm more than conquer. Christ make me that way. Praise God. Not maybe. Not you will be. But here the word of God emphasis for us. But you are more than conquer. I hope that you will practice like I am do in early days of my walk with Christ. I stand in the mirror every morning. Do a thing that um, it may be strange to people who are watching. That's okay. You can close your door and begin to look into the mirror and begin to tell yourself, I'm more than conquer. I'm victorious in Christ. I am who God say I am. There's many times I prepare for the battle for the ministry and then back in my study, I walk around, remind myself that I'm more than conquer. With his help, with the position that he gave it to me, he put me in the place that he made me not only a conqueror, but more than that. That means he empowered me, he would back me up. 
and he will be with me all the way. That's comforting. Because terrible thing for you to have a feeling that you're alone out there. Fighting on your own strength. But let this scripture remind you that there's a God love you so much that when he sent his spirit into your spirit, the Holy Spirit doing this inside our spirit. Abba, Father, to God. It's like, oh God, and you run away, but Abba, reach out. Beautiful picture that I saw in, in, uh, in Jerusalem. I land in Tel Aviv about in the afternoon. By the time that they take me to the stone, uh, the, the hotel I'm staying, and I didn't know. And because of the schedule, I scheduled my flight to land in Jerusalem in Sabbath day. Nothing open. Everybody go to the synagogue. And you see different kind of shoes um, later on. I need something to, uh, to drink. I need some water because I, I drink a lot of water throughout the day. And I asked the guy worked in the front desk of the hotel and they say, when, uh, where can I get some water? So you can, you can buy a bottle of water in, uh, in the hotel here, but it's very expensive. They say, how about marketplace and everything? They say, everything is closed. But wait for another hour or so. When the sun down, the people rise up. Because it's a bad day, it's end at 6 o'clock. And this beautiful thing, because I walk the street, uh, make sure and say, okay, the sun is down, they are about to open. And suddenly I saw black dress people begin to surface on the street everywhere. And I saw this wonderful picture. This little girl walk with her mom and see the father and say, Abba, Abba. She ran and she lived and the man catch her and hold her in her arm. I think right away of this scripture, Abba, Abba. Because Paul in the middle of say something in Greek, suddenly he leaned back to the language of his mother tongue, Aramaic. And he used the word Abba. Beautiful voice, sound when it's come out. And God wants us to know that we have a Father in heaven. Watching, protecting, empower, make sure that he will protect us and help us gain victory in life by saying we are more than conquer in Him. Life will show you many things. In verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then Paul begin to, went on to list out seven different obstacles that every one of us will face in life, one time or another, in one form or in another. Trouble, hardship, or persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sore. He say, shall troubled or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sore, can separate us from the love of Christ. The 
although this was asked 2,000 years ago, nothing had changed much, right? We face these things in our life. When we are very disturbed by difficult situations, trouble, hardship, persecution, famine, and we question God's love. He says, where is God's love? He said, he loved me. Why, why these things happen? When you are going through famine, lacking of financially, materially, or emotionally, or when we are derived of what we feel we need, we question his love for us. But Paul shout back. The answer is nothing. Nothing can separate us from his love. No way. No experience of any kind can ever change the truth that God loved for us. He loved us. May I say it again to you this morning. You are loved by God. Not just some rich man out there. Or just only the set of parents that you have at home. But as a powerful God who created this universe, who still holds this universe in his hand. I want you to know that he loves you. And may his voice is amplified through this message to remind you that God loves you. You may not know it or accept it yet, but accept it soon because that will help you. You are loved by God. And He already guarantees you that you will have victory because He make you more than conquer in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Noted that he did not say, God will remove all of these things or immune us of any hardship in life. But the scripture tells us, he said instead, in all these things, in all the things that we go through in life, we are more than conquer. Praise God. Does that help anybody in this place today? Who do you think you are? You're more than conquer. Because when you know who you are, you will know what to do. Now look at something that I encourage you to learn practice. Practice will make it perfect. Because sometimes the devil thinks in life is one to watch to see that you really believe what you say. I use the analogy. Have you noticed that when a group of three or four people walk down the street, then the dog begins to bark at them? And then next thing you know, one particular person in that group the dog begins to go after that person and bark even more. Have you once observed and asked the question why out of three or four, one person, the dog just go after that person? Why? Because the, the dog can see fear in that person. The other three, <laughs> just a dog barking. But one is, ah, and the dog is just keep going after that person. I'm here today to say, fear no more. And the devil will know that you know who you are in Christ because you are more than conquer. Not just barely make it, but landslide. He said, you are more than conquer. You don't just survive, you thrive in God. And you, I said, in the end of the day, 
sit with Christ in the heaven. There's a wonderful, wonderful thing that's happened in your life as soon as you got saved, accept Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Jesus had promised us and tell us in advance things that we will face in life. In this world, John 16, verse 33, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart. God already, Jesus already overcome the world. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. Now, when trouble comes, how you will deal with it? When you know who you are in Christ, when you know that you are secure in Christ, you know that you are held by His purpose and you are held in His love, this is how you will fight the battle in your life. You will push back. You will fight back because you know who you are in Christ. Like David, act like one. He was just a shepherd boy, but he dared to challenge a seasoned warrior, Goliath. How? He fought lion or bears. And when they attacked his ship, he won. Because they know that God is with him. God delivered them into my hand, he said. He was an overcomer. That's why when he deal with things in every day in life, and then when this opportunity come for him to fight on behalf of his nation, the people of God, this shepherd boy can stand up to this giant and say, if God is with me when I find the lion, the bear at home, this uncircumcision, this warrior of the Palestine will go in down. And he fight from that position. He knows that God is with him. Do you believe this today? that you are more than conquer. You're secure in God's love. And when God is standing on your side, He bless you, then who can curse the person that God bless? Who can stand against the people that God for? Nobody. Make sure that you know and walk in that understanding and knowledge. As an overcomer, you fight from Christ's victory. Not to fight for victory, but from Christ's victory. That's two different things because the war already decided. This battle, the small battle that we fight in life, and God allowed us to face in our life, is to just clean up. But many times, we let this small battle get up a hand. We lose it. and make us feel like, are we on the loser side? But I'm here this morning to remind you that we are on the winner side. Christ already gained victory for us. You must believe in what God say about you. You must know who you are. You are more than conquered through Christ who loves you. We need to gain control over our mind and feed it with the truth of God. Do not listen to what the devil tries to say. And tell you there's a gender out there by different religion. They want to make sure that our mind has been woke up and intimidated by the things of the devil. Wonder why? 
more and more you see come around Halloween time. Horror movie. Crazy thing is going on. It's just like the whole world, especially Hollywood, it's just like they praise up the work of the devil. Then they see parents begin to dress up their children, walk around with um, skeleton, with devil face, all kind of crazy thing going on. It's like there's an agenda that they, they want to elevate this picture of the devil. But I'm here to remind you that it is a God that lives inside of you. He's greater than anything out there. And He makes you more than conquer. You are the child of God, greatly loved by Him. And you can do all things through Him who gives you strength. Nothing can stop you when you understand that. What do we do? The scripture tells us that when those thoughts come into our mind, and if we not demolish them, very soon they become a stronghold in our life. We walk in fear. But here, Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 said, we demolish argument and every pretension that set itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Every thought that is make you fearful, any thought that tell you that you are failing, capture those thoughts, make it subject, obedient to Christ and say, no, Christ said that I'm more than conquer. Christ said that I'm victorious in Him. You force every thought in your mind to align back into God's Word. This is what I'm trying to do this morning to help you. Take everything and lie back into the Word of God and say, subject to Christ. I'm more than conquer. I'm better than this. And I already guarantee the place and the position of victory. No matter how you find me, I know that my Father in heaven will help me with you. And we will celebrate our victory. We have divine power to demolish those strongholds in our life. And as Christians, we need to practice this every day. I told you, I do this very often in the morning. I stand in front of the mirror. After I brush my teeth, after I wash my face, I look into that mirror and remind myself I'm more than conquer. Because I know that as soon as I get out of my front door, I begin to face a lot of challenges. Because God is with me. I'm secure in His purpose. I'm secure in His love. I can face anything that the world throw at me. I'm not invited, but I say, bring on. Because as family advocate, I know that I'm standing for something that the devil don't want me to stand for. And as a man that God have called, and the anointing of apostleship is on my life, let's go and expand the kingdom of God. I know that the devil is not very happy about it. So I know I face challenges in life. I know that I preach to, to, to help transform people's lives, to change them. That means I will say things that people don't like at first. I create something in them to make them change. 
And many times they're upset at first, but then they receive it and their life is changed. I know the battle that I face. That's why I stand in the mirror, in front of the mirror every day and remind myself I'm more than conquer. I encourage you to do the same thing. Declare this thing in your life often. In Christ, I'm born to reign. In Christ, I'm born to rule. In Christ, I'm born to prosper. In Christ, I'm born to flourish. In Christ, I'm born to make a difference. Remind yourself. And tell the devil, my sin has been forgiven. Good try. Bring it up. But praise God, my sin has been forgiven. When the devil reminds you you are a sinner, you turn around and tell him, that encouraged me a lot. Because Christ come to die for sinner. Good try. Respond in the way that God helped you. My sin has been forgiven. I'm a righteous of God in Christ Jesus. The favor of God abounds toward me. I'm blessed. I'm chosen. I'm adopted. I'm accepted. I'm redeemed. I have knowledge. I have inheritance. And I'm also co heir with Christ. So I'm blessed. I have the Holy Spirit. I live by the Spirit. I walk in the Spirit. I sow in the Spirit. I follow after the Spirit. And He is the Spirit of truth. He will make the way for me to walk in holiness. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. In the beginning, when, when I say these things, it's just like hesitating and say, what? I can do all things? Yes. So say it as you believe it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. By my God, I can live over war. By my God, I can run through a troops. I am more than conquer. I am unstoppable. I am invincible, I am strong, I am stable, I am fruitful, I am prosperous, I am healthy, I am wise because the divine wisdom. And declare to yourself and everything that tries to listen to me, I excel. I excel in wisdom, I excel in knowledge, I excel in understanding, I excel in my walk with God, and excel in my ministry, and excel in my family, and excel in my marriage, and excel in my health, and excel in finance, and excel in my career, and excel in my business. That's who you are. May God help that this message will come and reinforce you. Just like I've described, there's sometimes when the battle is so fierce, I have to step back and lean back to this wonderful scripture and say, hmm, yeah, but God got my back. I'm more than conquer. You know, when I study martial art, one of the things that my master tell me, if you face a group of adversaries, they want to attack you. The best thing for you to do, to do is stand and have the wall cover your back. At least you minimize the people attack you from the back. That's why even until today, I know that I ask God to remove all of that martial art out of my life because as I learned Kung Fu and it's deep into Buddhism and all the move is named after Buddhism. So I ask God to wash away all of that. I'm not practicing anymore, but one thing I'm still practicing is even today when I'm in the restaurant, 
I make sure that I have a table that my back is covered with the wall. I want to look out and see things up front. May God help that this scripture that we learn today and the understanding that God make you more than conquer, you are secure in Christ. You are held by His purpose and you are held in His love. And when the enemy tries to attack you, lean back and let God cover your back. And then from there, you know, He will tell you how to fight back with that foundation that you understand that you are secure in Christ. I have enough trophy to share with you that is work. It's work for me and work for thousands upon thousands of people who understand this principle that I share, I thought, and I teach them. Now is your time. Do not walk around feel defeated. Do not walk around question where is God's love? God's love is still there. He loves you so much. And say how and where. Most of the time, I step aside and I say, look at things from my back. The cross. It tells us how much God loves us. At home, I used to have a picture make out of Mother Pearl with the question. How much you love me? Question mark. And it's a picture of the cross. And underneath the description, this much he said. He spread out his arm. Nailed to the cross. Shed his blood to the last drop. Because he loved us so much. And because of that, he make us more than conquer in Christ. Our sins have been forgiven. We are secure in God. Not only a few years in our life, but to eternity. Let's pray. If these are something that you have faced, there's something in your life right now, an obstacle, an addiction, a relationship needs to be mended, a fear, something that is blocking you, is overwhelming you. You want to ask for God's help to be an overcomer. We're ready to stand with you. pastor and leader in the house I want to pray with you not to gain victory but from the victorious position that we have in Christ praise God just like on Friday we see a lot of young people have respond to the message I encourage you, if you face things in life that more than you can bear, and you feel defeated, this morning allowed us to pray with you, pray for you, that you can leave this place, know that you are an overcomer, you are more than conquer. You can and you will. It doesn't mean that you won't have trouble anymore, but this means you overcome the trouble and you can tell the Lord right now. If that is you, then step forward and allow pastor and leader to pray with you. There's comfort in the fall. And we have some shepherd in the house want to stand with you and pray with you.
And if you hear and you say, Pastor, I don't feel like a conqueror at all, you can be. The condition is in Christ, you will be more than conquer. How you invite Christ to come into your life, repent of your sin, and then invite Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. He will become Lord and Savior in your life. And He's ready to it. He's ready to take you in because He already paid for us your salvation. And He's ready to take you in. Do not fight the battle alone. Don't live life, feel defeated all the time. But begin to hear and receive His love and begin to walk in victory. Father, we pray that your spirit will plant the truth deep into our heart. We believe, Lord, that we will overcome our problem, for we are more than conquered through you. We are not a victim, we are victorious in you. Lord, help us fight back the battle with faith-filled attitude. And help us depend fully upon the power of the Holy Spirit. Fill us afresh this morning, Lord, so we can overcome. Lord, give us victory over all that seek to destroy us or oppose us. Glorify your name through our victory. We give our life to you. Use this for your glory. Thank you, Lord. That your word have announced to us this morning. Your word is the truth. And they stand forever and ever and ever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word, your truth will stand forever and your truth say we secure in Christ thank you God thank you that you have a purpose for our life as the rest of us who have known that we are more than conquer in Christ we yield our life in your hand Confirm us every day to be more like Christ. Because our community, Houston and surrounding city, needs to see Christ walking among them. Our company needs Christ walk into our company. Our school need Christ to walk around in our campus. I ask that you will confirm each and every one of us to be more like Christ every day and allow us to be the reflection of Christ for our community. We thank you, Lord. We love you and we praise you. Thank you for assuring us this morning. That we are secure in your love. Thank you, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a new look about you. Tell yourself often, I'm more than conquer. I'm secure in Christ. Held by His purpose, held in His love. And walk with your head lift high and say, hmm, Praise God. 
that he loved me that much. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Wonderful time of fellowship. The altar is still open for those who need pray. We're here to minister to you. God bless and see you later. In Jesus' name.